Hi everybody, this is Anne K. Emery, and today I'm going to give you a quick HLOOKUP tutorial. HLOOKUP is pretty similar to VLOOKUP. Uh, basically what they both do is they pull in data from one full complete spreadsheet and they put it someplace else. So it's a way of kind of um, moving data around inside one of your files or across several files. It'll make more sense when you see it. Uh, so let's get started. Here is my main uh, spreadsheet of all of my data. I'm looking at five different cities or counties and I've got some basic uh, American Fact Finder census data for each of them about their populations. So I can see the total populations for each of these places in Virginia as well as an age distribution, how many residents are under five years old, five to nine years old, uh, and so on. I've got more information down here about the median age, how many males there are, how many females there are, uh, let's see, race ethnicity data is also in here, whether they're Hispanic or Latino, um, if they live alone with a spouse, with a child, whether there are vacant houses and so on. So I've got about 200 variables in my full spreadsheet um, that I've just pasted in from the American Fact Finder website. And what I want to do is pull in just about 20 of these variables of interest into a one-page snapshot. So I want one dashboard or snapshot for each of my five cities. Here's what the completed snapshot would look like. I'll zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Um, and I've set the print area around this so that it will print nice and neat um, on one page or I can save as a PDF. So here's Alexandria's data, some quick stats along the top, total population and so on, and four very, very basic charts. Um, I'm just showing you this data today really to demonstrate the HLOOKUP function. Um, if I was making this in real life, I'd probably tweak the colors, tweak the font, think about the layout um, in a little bit more detail, maybe use something beyond just a bar chart and so on. But today's tutorial, like I said, it's not really about the data visualization side, it's more about the HLOOKUP side. Um, so what I want to happen is that when I select my city name from this drop down menu, I need all of my data to update. So when I select Alexandria here, my data table, my shortened data table of just these, you know, 20 or 30 variables, um, all of this is tied to the city name thanks to, as you can see here, my HLOOKUP function. So it's taking data from this tab, the full data tab, and it's putting it into my dashboard tab, into this section right here. And then the charts are linked this way as well. So it goes, first it's in the full data spreadsheet, then it's in these cells here in my mini data table, and then it goes into the charts so that when I switch this drop down menu to the different city names, everything updates. The numbers in the data table update, the charts update. And then you'd have five disaggregated fact sheets for each of your five locations. So what I'm going to demonstrate in the next few minutes is the HLOOKUP function. Um, like I said, HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP are pretty similar. VLOOKUP stands for vertical lookup. HLOOKUP stands for horizontal lookup. Here's the difference. So in this example, I've got city names along the top. Um, so I've got my, my main names or my ID names or my dashboard names are going horizontally across my spreadsheet. Other times in my spreadsheet, um, probably 99% of the time actually, I have the names along the bottom, uh, excuse me, along the left hand side, along the rows. So everything is swapped or flipped or transposed. Um, so I might have like school names here on the left and then 2009 data, 2010 data, 2011 data. Uh, I might have city names here and the variables going across the top. That's a typical spreadsheet layout. Mine is just set up like this because the American Fact Finder website that I downloaded this from, uh, it simply had the data laid out like this. I had no reason to change it at all. I just copied and pasted and it copied just perfectly into my spreadsheet um, and the city names just happen to be along the top. They go horizontally so I use HLOOKUP. So let's take a look at our function here. Uh, it looks really, really scary at first. Do not be scared. Please do not be scared. I'm going to walk you through each of the four steps. So there is this section here about a lookup value. 
Then if you click on this middle section, see how they're separated by commas? This is about a table array. This third section talks about a row index number. And this fourth section that says false is called a range lookup. So I'm going to delete what I have here and walk you through each of these steps. So first, uh, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see this. So I want the total population count for Prince William to show up. So I'm going to type in equals hlookup. Always start your functions with the equals sign. And Excel is smart. It knows what formula I'm aiming for, and it gives me a little definition. It looks for the value in my main data table, blah, blah, blah. You open up your parentheses, and then it gives you four more clues, and it guides you to fill in each of these four sections. So the first thing you fill in is the lookup value, uh, which is a fancy way of talking about an ID number or a name or some type of unique identifying information that separates each of these five dashboards from one another. So in this case, um, it's Prince William is the name. So I would click on the thing that's in this cell right here. That's the value I want to look for in my full data table. Then you type in a comma to move to the next section of the spreadsheet. The next section, um, the next section of the formula, excuse me, the next section talks about a table array. And that says, where is that full data table that all of your data and all of your numbers and all of your text is located in? Well, it's in this sheet right here called data. I'm going to highlight uh, this entire thing. I don't think I need column A. I think I just want column B, but let's see. So I'm going to highlight all of my 200 or so rows worth of data, the data for all of my five cities. And the data that's selected uh, has blinky green lines around it. That looks right. We'll test it later on. We'll see if it's right. Then insert another comma. That'll move us to the third section of the spreadsheet. The third section is a row index number. And if you ever forget what this means later, um, and you don't want to have to watch the whole video over, you can just click on this. It looks like a little link. It's blue and underlined. And Excel has a help menu that should pop up. Well, at least it does in old versions of Excel. Um, or you can click on this FX button. It'll give you some clues. Um, a row index number means, hey, which row of data do you want from your spreadsheet? I'm looking for the total population right here which is in the third row of my spreadsheet. I know that because I've labeled them for myself here. One, two, three, four, and so on, just to make it foolproof and very, very easy. So you actually type in a three, and then you type in a comma to go to the next section of your, of your function. And Excel tells you that you have to type in either true or false. So actually the word true, T-R-U-E, or the word false, F-A-L-S-E. Just take my word for it, trust me on this one, 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to type in false. And that means that you want an exact, exact match. You don't want Excel to guess and just give you the closest value or the first thing that it finds as it's kind of running its magic behind the scenes. You want the exact thing. You want only Prince William data, total population from row three. So you close your parentheses. You've got all your four pieces in there, and you just press the Enter key on your keyboard. And let's see if that worked. It says that 402,000 people live in Prince William, Virginia. Let's check our original data tab and see if that worked. Great. OK, 402,000 people. That's perfect. Now what I would do um, is I would go through and I would copy and paste this formula. And this is where we need to do uh, do a few time-saving tricks. I'm going to show you some, some additional secrets. So let's say next, if you want to fill in how many people in Prince William are under five years old, ideally you could take this formula and copy and paste it. So you'd say control C, and of course you see the blinky green lines, and control V, but it's not going to work and I'll show you why. Okay, it says NA, and there's a few reasons this doesn't work. Um, so the first reason is this first part of our spreadsheet where it says lookup value, it's looking up um, Prince William. That's the unique name of the data, the column of data that we want, Prince William's data. 
so it's in D10. Let's go to this next one. And now it's looking up D13. It's kind of um, moved or squished or uh, rotated or kind of just smushed over the data that we're looking up. So we can't have that. We don't want to look up this empty thing right there. We want it to know that that's our anchor cell. That's the name of the ID number, the name of the dashboard we want. So the best way to do this is to insert dollar signs, okay? Um, this is a really interesting thing about Excel. I don't know who invented this, but they were absolute genius to invent this. And what dollar signs do is they hold your formula constant. So that as you copy and paste your formula into different cells or different sheets, um, it kind of stays frozen on that anchor cell that you want. So as I copy my formula down, it's always going to be in this column D, but I want the 10 to always stay put. I always want the things that are in row 10 of my spreadsheet. So you type in an actual dollar sign, that symbol right there, before the 10, and now the 10 will stay frozen in time and frozen in place. Let's press enter again. It doesn't affect that cell at all, that's the same thing. But now let's copy and paste again and I'll show you what it does. So copy, let's go down here and paste. Okay, it still doesn't work because there's one more thing you have to switch, but it's getting a little better. Um, if you click on this cell, you can see it's, it's still selecting this D10 cell is frozen in time, so that's good. There's one more bit that we need to add dollar signs to, and it's this section. It's the table array. Okay, so, whoops, uh, let's delete that. So we'll go up to our original formula. The first part is good, we've got a dollar sign where we need it. But now in the second section, table array, we need to freeze those numbers. So we want the entire table array to stay frozen. Let's look at our original table right here in the data tab. So our table goes from B1 through G something, G like 200 or something down there. So even as we copy and paste our formula, we don't want the, the table to like uh, move over to the side and include like C through H data or D through I data. And we don't want it to go uh, downwards. So if we copy and paste our table, we don't want it to start in row two or then to start in row three. We need it frozen in this very, very specific section because that's where all of our data is living. So more dollar signs. Okay, so we need to put a dollar sign before the B and before the 1 and before the G and before the 217. So that one's still fine. It's, it's looking a little longer here, but like I said, promise me you won't get intimidated. It's just four pieces of information. Let's copy and paste again. We'll see if it works. Copy and paste. And actually, there, I think there's going to be one more thing we have to switch, but that's easy. So it's pulling in that 402 number. We're getting a little closer. So the last thing we have to change is this 3. So remember the 3, it pulls in the row index number. So in that case, it's pulling in the total population, which is in row 3. But now we want it to be row 4's data. We want to know how many people are under 5 years old. So all you would do is simply type in a 4 right there. Let's see if that's right, 33,000. And there is our 33,000 number. Bear with me while I show you one more time-saving trick. Um, and that's why I have these italic numbers off to the side. So you could type in this 3 by hand or an advanced uh, kind of Superman trick that I use a lot is I actually select this uh, cell right here, the cell that has the value 3 in it, and you would put a dollar sign, let's see, would you put it anywhere? I don't think you would. I think this one is dollar sign free. Let's try it. So press enter. It still pulls in 402,000, that's correct. So it's pulling in whatever is in that third row of the spreadsheet which we know is the total population number. Let's copy and paste our formula again. Remember how before we had hand typed in uh, the number four? Well now it's pulling from this cell right here. 
and it's saying, hey, give me whatever is in the fourth row of that spreadsheet. That's what I care about. Now we should be able to copy and paste again. Copy and paste. And now it's pulling in, again, Prince William data from my very specific table array, B1 through G217, and whatever is in the fifth row of my table. And then, of course, you just put in false all the time and you'll be in good shape. Another option besides copying and pasting is you can click on this little tiny little square in the lower right hand corner. You have to put your mouse right on it so you get a plus sign. And you can drag your formula down the page like that. So that works as well. Now uh, because everything is linked, so from the data full spreadsheet table to this Prince William data in my drop down menu, to these numbers, to these charts, so when you update your drop down menu, everything updates. Look how nice that is. It's absolute magic thanks to HLOOKUP. There's Loudon data and so on. Okay, well there you go. There is your HLOOKUP tutorial. Thank you so much.